Hi, everyone. I promised I would share Canada Mom and Canada Dad stories about how weed has helped parents. Just as a reminder, all stories are anonymous. If you would like to submit your own cannabis story and how weed has helped you and or has helped you as a parent, please feel free to send your story to bravoandblaze at gmail.com. Again, all stories will remain anonymous. Here's our story for today. Canna mom story for you. So I'm a mom of two, my second just turned two, and for almost eight years, I was on a major dose of Zoloft and Klonopin for my anxiety and depression following my first baby. I was severely postpartum and had to be in the hospital a few times due to depression. Almost committed myself one day, but Philly institutions are wild and I couldn't go in. And I have severe chronic migraines. I got my medical card to help with the migraines and I couldn't be happier. I'm off all of my medication for everything. Six months last week. And my migraines are almost non-existent except for hot sonar ones. Cry face emoji. I can't tell you how much more productive I am, more present and healthier. I've lost over 50 pounds this past year from smoking and walking for my mental health. I had to get recertified a few weeks ago for my card. And when I told my doctor how well the weed was helping and how I got off all my meds, he said I was the best outcome he has ever heard. I cannot scream enough about the benefits of weed and I love everything you do to get the stigma taken off of it. It's a literal lifesaver for me. Also this week, I mentioned on Instagram that I was going to explain what dabbing was and why I dab. So what is dabbing? Most people, when they think of weed, they think of like smoking a joint or smoking a bowl or a bong or a blunt or sometimes, or most times they think about eating it. So what I have here is a little pipe. This is like, it's a bong pretty much. And the only difference when taking a dab is um, the tools that you need. Dabbing is essentially vaporizing concentrated cannabis. And so there's multiple ways that you can get different concentrates. There's different methods to it. There's different consistencies to it. If you go to your local dispensary, you can ask a bud tender and they'll explain all of that for you. Anyways, essentially the reason why I dab is because To me, vaporizing and from things that I've read, um, I do believe that it is less harmful than smoking. So for me personally, I like dabbing um, because one, it feels like it's a quote unquote cleaner way of consuming if you're inhaling it. I feel that dabbing is also um, more discreet than smoking. So you won't get that smell all over your clothes and your hair. And then also for me personally, it is cheaper for me to dab because one gram of concentrate, it's not a full gram, but just an example. Um, One gram of concentrate will probably last me the same amount as like one ounce. This week we hit 2000 podcast plays. Yay. Thank you so much, everyone. It's amazing that we even hit 2000. I never in a million years thought that we'd be here. So thank you so, so much. Make sure you follow, subscribe, turn on notifications on your favorite podcast platform and on YouTube. I hate to sound thirsty, but please like comment, share, repost, and all that good stuff so you can help me grow and spread the word on cannabis advocacy and living your best life. I'm also going to leave a link in the show notes so you can go and subscribe to my newsletter where I will be sending out updates on all the latest and greatest things I'm working on. I'll be sending out links to new episodes, which come out twice weekly, new products that get added to the shop on bravoandblaze.com. This week, I released the OC Reels Whatever I Want tea, so go check that out. It's also made from hemp, so even better. 
I'll also be sending out updates on any events that I have going on. I really want to do a 420 event, but I'm still not quite sure what to do. I know it's very last minute, but if you have any ideas, shoot me a message. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, in a perfect world, my dream 420 event would be, you know, obviously a 420 friendly consuming place with a bunch of people, like-minded people who want to watch Chelsea Handler perform some stand up. Snoop Dogg do some of his own performance and I'm sure it'd be lit, <laughs> especially if we had some, you know, infused meals, like a nice fancy gourmet infused meal. I would love that, but putting it out there, manifesting, we'll see, maybe next year. So much going on in Bravo this week. We started off with Candy and the Gang. Brandon and Dom Unique got caught kissing. Make sure you check out my upcoming episode with Dom Unique. That'll be coming out soon. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I still believe that Candy and the Gang is going to be one of the best new shows on Bravo. I think the people on this show are amazing. And I think they're going to be very successful. So make sure you go check that out. It's on Sunday nights at 9 Eastern. This week on Below Deck Sailing Yacht, um, the biggest thing that I remember is Ashley falling out of her, her bunk after she went on a rant, very similar to what Tom did over her that she was talking down to him about, but whatever. Um, she was basically upset because Gabby was sleeping in the same bed as Gary. Ashley thinks Gabby's a snake. I don't know. What do you all think? Is she a snake or is Ashley just jealous i don't know but i'll watch i love the boat manses the boat manses are the best and i'm a little confused though why is gabby hating on marcos marcos is like the best chef we've ever seen he's single he makes delicious food hello i would be i would be kissing some butt just for the food but um I don't know. We'll see how things go. I did have a question. I don't know if this has been truly confirmed because I keep hearing different things, but I thought Colin was single at the time of filming because he had a girlfriend his first season. They wound up breaking up after his first season. And I think that they were broken up already when he went on this season of filming. So I need to know, was Colin single or not? If he was single, why is everyone just like picking the same guys. I just don't understand. There's so many other people, but um, I do love Gary and which I didn't like him before, but I'm st I, he's grown on me. I like him now. So we'll see what happens. So Alex is back on summer house. He was missing for a couple of weeks. People were starting to speculate, but he is back. He was at the reunion. So all is well, I guess. I don't know. Alex and Luke seemed to be like swapping places. They're like pinch hitters for each other or something. They're like, tag, you're it. You go to the house this weekend. So interesting, but I really love the beach party that Robert and Danielle put together. It was gorgeous. It was a dream. Robert is amazing. I mean, he basically referred to Lauren Conrad at one point. How much more can you love him? I mean, he's amazing. Lindsay had a guest or a date, whatever you want to call it. His name was Ahmed. They were very heavy on the PDA, but then we cut to, you know, Lindsay walking in the house, super pissed. And apparently there was a fight. Ahmed didn't come back to the house. Lindsay was upset about it. And the other girls are starting to get concerned. Like, why are you so intense? But I don't know. I just love my Lindsay Hubbard. Um, the next day they go to a vineyard and they get there by party bus. They play little games. That was cute and fun. Um, best part for me is Andrea. And he's like, Paige, who has the biggest penis? And she's like, Andrea. And he's like, wow. So that was hilarious, especially considering um, she had already hooked up with Craig at that point. So I guess that means Andrea has a bigger penis than Craig just saying. Anyways, um, I have to say I am thoroughly impressed by Carl and his ability to 
withhold his sobriety while being around all these people who are drinking all the time. Not only that, he works for an alcohol company and he's going on these outings like to a vineyard where they're all drinking. It's just props to Carl, stand-up guy. He His stock is rising for me. I just, I'm loving Carl. Then we end the episode with Amanda and Lindsay. And I had a little bit of confusion because I don't recall Lindsay ever telling anyone about her miscarriage other than Carl. So Amanda bringing it up, it triggered me personally because I've gone through the loss of, you know, pregnancy and a stillbirth. So I didn't really love that she was bringing that up with Lindsay. Like Lindsay is, uh, you know, like unapologetically authentic and just following her heart. And I admire that about her. I love it for her. Go Lindsay, team Lindsay, not mad at Amanda at all, but you know, just, I didn't love how she mentioned that. Anyways, this week on Jersey, the Judice females, all, how many are there? Like five or six? The Judices moved out of their home. And I have to say, I did get teary-eyed. It was sad. And I don't care if you like Teresa or not. There is no way. I, I can't believe anyone watching Teresa over the years, seeing that and not getting emotional because we've literally seen so much of her life, whether you like her or not, she's not perfect. We know this, but like, I mean, it's very touching to see her go through all these phases and then moving into Louis's house. That was sweet, but they really got me. And I think I'm falling in love with Teresa and Louis's love bubble when they, when Louis showed the engraving and the stone in the backyard. And it was the saying that Gia said at Nona, Nona's, um, um, memorial. It was just so I was like bawling, but anyways, <laughs> at the end of that episode, that's when Teresa flipped out on Marge through the drinks. And it was just classic Jersey. I mean, I feel fulfilled. I don't know what else to say. Um, I don't even like talking about Jersey to be honest, because a lot of the fandom is very passionate and can be toxic at times. So I'll end my recap on that. Um, in other news, uh, Miami Miami is being shown on Bravo. Now, um, I watched it when it was on Peacock. So I've seen the whole thing. I've said it before. It is my favorite Housewives franchise at the moment. So I highly encourage you all to go watch that on Bravo. If you haven't seen it already this week, Alexia talked about Frankie almost dying. It's just <sighs> such a good season. Love Frankie, love Alexia. Go watch. Below Deck Down Under. Oh my God, I'm starting to get like, I kind of had no feelings. It was kind of like flatlined. I mean, I was excited about the captain and, you know, excited about the new staff and everything. But then I was like, I don't know if this is going to be good because I saw the boatman's fizzle with the bosun and Magda. And he was like, so pissed about that, by the way. But um, it's picking up now. Aisha and the chef are butting heads big time. Aisha is hating it. The chef is lazy. He's arrogant. He's just awful, awful. And I really hope that Aisha gets a chance to like really just lay into him. Um, and the captain is starting to have beef with the bosun. I never for a million years thought we would see a bosun directly and specifically tell their deck crew not to listen to the captain. This is going to be good. And I just, I mean, I totally get where the bosun's coming from. He's like all about safety, but <clears throat> you know, captain's in charge. So this should be very interesting. Also, I'm sorry. I feel bad for Benny, but he's just such a wet blanket. It's so hard. And I, I like Magda I, as like 
you know, a person, her personality, but I kind of feel like Aisha should fire her. I, just, I don't know if she's the best for a third stew. She's blatantly insubordinate in front of guests. And that to me was like, ah, I was so shocked. But anyways, that is the weekly recap for all the shows, Bravo shows. In other Bravo news, on Watch What Happens Live on Monday, Lala was on and the way that Andy introduced her, he said from the Vanderpump Valley, which was very alarming to everyone. So now everyone's speculating that there's some spinoff called Vanderpump Valley. And there was already a blind that came out, I believe this week about um, potentially the OGs like Stassi, um, Brittany, well, she's not OG, but like the old OG crew, like seeing them, you know, go through their parenting and stuff like that. So there was a blind about that. But then last week, I just put it out in the air that I kind of like the idea of some of the Vanderpump people, the OGs, and some of the OG Shaw's people getting together for a separate show. I think that would be super fun, especially since Lala on Watch What Happens Live this week called Gigi a fan. A little subtle shade there. And then Gigi tweeted about Lala saying she didn't look good last night on Watch What Happens Live or something. I don't know. It was just, it's messy. And I don't want to see it. Um, especially because Gigi also had Randall on her podcast. Just shade left and right. I kind of want to see it. Also, I heard that Gigi may have said something about Katie. I didn't see that one myself, but I hope not. Um, but speaking of Shaw's, if you're caught up, you know that Mike got arrested for domestic violence. And we all speculated that was against Paulina. I've said it many times. He is most likely to be on Dateline. And then Bravo cancels Shaw's. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they canceled because of Mike and because, you know, they just don't want to deal with the legal stuff. Plus it was like started, the ratings were starting to go down. So maybe they're just going to like do a spinoff with the Vanderpump people. That'd be so fun. Um, but then this week, apparently Paulina spoke out to page six about Mike and Basically, it sounds like there may have been a threesome going on and Paulina was not the person who was harmed. So that's interesting. I really don't know what to make of it. I hope that Paulina is not being abused and I hope that if she is, that she can get out. Paulina, baby, if you hear this, we'll help you, okay? Um, in other news, Steve Lodge got married. I don't really care about that. Does anyone care about that? I think what most people care about is that the Beverly Hills trailer came out. And the most shocking part for me, I think, is when Erica says she only cares about herself. And it, I guess that's not shocking, but it's shocking the way she said it. It was just very like, wow. Um, in the end, Lisa Rinna tells Kyle something that Kathy said about Kyle and Kyle's crying to Kathy and Lisa's just got this evil grin on her face and I'm just dying to know what is happening. And I, I just love the dynamics of the sisters on the show or any kind of family dynamics on a show like this because there is so much more under the surface that we don't even see or know about that plays into their behavior and why they do certain things. So I love to see it. I think it's fascinating. Um, also, this week, Garcelle and Erica have been feuding. Garcelle on the trailer said to Erica, I don't have to do anything to make you look bad. You do that on your own. Ugh, it was, I have like chills, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but the Garcelle and Erica feud made its way on a social media this week when we saw Erica throw away Garcelle's book that she's been promoting all week. So I don't know, as far as like a publicist standpoint, I feel like, or publicity standpoint, I feel like that was well done. Like kudos, Erica and Garcelle, 
you did it. Cause I don't know if I really like Garcelle had a book out, but it definitely helped. So go team go. Also, I wanted to start sharing my pop culture news of the week because Bravo is a big part of me, but pop culture in general is too. So I wanted to talk about the dropout, which is the story of Elizabeth Holmes. Um, Priscilla from Bonjour Bitches blog is going to be a guest on my podcast coming up soon. um, I think next month, but she is so hilarious. She did um, a reel on Instagram where she played Anna Delvey, Um, I forgot that one girl's name, the girl from bad vegan and then Elizabeth Holmes. And she did a little skit and it was just so funny. I actually went and watched the dropout because of that reel. So thank you very much. Bonjour bitches blog. I'll include her information in the show notes so that you can go check out that reel. It was hilarious. Also Elizabeth Holmes, that whole story. Insane. I just, it's like in that scammer genre that I'm just so obsessed about. And, um, my first love is true crime, pretty much true crime and comedy, uh, which brings me to the thing about Pam. I think it's on Peacock. So that one has Renee Zellweger playing Pam. And as I'm starting to watch it, I was like, oh my God, I know this story because I've seen it so many times on Dateline and on the ID channel. And, um, so I kind of lost a little bit of interest because I, I like to hear new <laughs> true crime stories, but I kind of, I am going to continue watching it because I like the way it was written. I think there's some comedy in it, subtle, dark humor there. Um, so I'm going to continue watching it. I haven't finished it. And I think they're still releasing episodes every week. But- ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are, why did I say Jennifer Lopez? J-Lo are engaged again. Um, and I just keep wondering, like, is it because of Madison and Craig, like that Southern charm reunion was so insane. Craig was so unhinged. He released that information about a rod, which essentially, well, the information about a rod and Madison, and then that's what led to Jen J Lo breaking up with a rod and then getting back together with Ben Affleck. And now they're engaged for a second time after like 20 years. Does anyone know why they broke up the first time? Cause I need them to have their own reality show and I would watch it. But anyways, uh, Britney Spears is pregnant. Everyone is happy about that. Everyone is happy about that. We love it. We love you, Britney. Congratulations. Also this week on social media, Kim and Pete are finally showing PDA, full PDA on social media. And not only did that happen, coincidentally, the Kardashians came out on Hulu this week. And I have chills as I'm saying it because that opening scene was amazing. I need to get a drone with a camera. And I just need to like start filming anything with it because that was insane. And I just kept thinking like the amount of production and prep work to put that all together was a lot. And I truly appreciated it. Kardashians start off with a bang and I love seeing Courtney and Travis, even though I like, I've always been team squirt. I love Scott, but I know like this is better for everyone. I I truly believe that. But I love to see that we, you know, we still have Scott. I think he's hilarious. I love him and Chloe together. Um, Kim mentioned Pete and asking him about SNL. Um, They're also, there's a whole sex tape scandal again with Kim. So it's like we're coming full circle. Tristan's face was there. But, uh, Didn't need to see Tristan, but everything, everything else is looking great. And I'm so glad to have the Kardashians back next up. I have my special guest, Kim from Bravo breaking news, who is a Bravo super fan. You can find her on Instagram. Join us for this interesting story about how she played a part in the real housewives of orange County storyline. 
in a past season with Tamara and Shannon. So I'm excited to hear all about that. Stick around, get lit, and keep blazing. So thank you so much. We have Bravo super fan and seasoned historian Kim Maikita, most known as Bravo Breaking News on Instagram. Welcome, Kim. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Jenny. I'm so excited. I know it's been a long time coming because I saw, I came across your account a while ago and I, right away I asked you, I was like, do you want to record for my podcast? This is like in season one, but logistics didn't work out. Like I said, I'm a little chaotic. And if you listen to my episodes, I'm sure everyone who, who follows knows, but um, I wanted to know, can you tell me a little bit about your account and how you got started? Yeah, so actually it all started um, in 2019, right before I went to BravoCon. Oh my God, you went to BravoCon. I went to BravoCon. So I've been a Bravo fan for like a decade, you know, like all the housewives, all the spinoffs, everything. And I followed all of these Instagram accounts. I have a background in social media and they were always my favorite accounts to follow. And so I was heading to BravoCon and I kind of saw all these accounts like posting about it and being like, let's do a meetup. And I'm like, you know, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. So I'm going to start my account. I launched it right before BravoCon in 2019. And then the rest is history. So was this before or after your, you somehow got inserted into the storyline of one of the Orange County seasons with Tamara and Shannon, right? That's how I found you. I saw your post where you were giving a flashback or just like a throwback to when that happened. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a dream fan moment. And I was just so like, I was happy for you. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And that's when I reached out to you. Can you tell us about that, actually, you know what? I have the record. Yes, so this was pre Bravo breaking news. Um, so I used to work in Laguna Beach, and of course, everybody who knows me knows that I'm obsessed with Bravo. It's like my brand, it's part of my personality, it just is. So yeah. As you know, the Real Housewives of OC film all over Orange County, and um, my coworker, shout out to Rachel Fox, was on her lunch break, and she was down getting coffee at Laguna Coffee, the local coffee shop. Well, she comes back into the office and says, Tamara and Shannon are filming. You have to get your ass down there right now. So I drop everything in the middle of the workday and run down to the coffee shop, and I sit there for about an hour and a half, just watching them film, just watching it go down. Um, And and I loved every second, but I could not hear what they were saying. I was like, you know, a little bit um, separated from them in the coffee shop. Obviously they had the camera crew around them. So I was just kind of observing. I was honestly freaking out, taking stories, posting, but I could not hear what they were saying. And so I was just posting in the moment, not even really thinking about it. And then like a few hours pass by and I start getting all of these messages from people being like, oh my God, like Tamara said that Kelly threw her mother down the stairs. And I was like, wait, hold up, what? And so I went back and had to rewatch the video and be like, oh shit. The audio that I caught was Tamara saying that Kelly threw her mother down the stairs. And so it kind of went viral. It just kind of got picked up all over the place. And so I kind of started freaking out, but I was like, you know, whatever, like this is just, I'm sure fans do this all the time. So a few months pass by, uh, they're still filming, you know, the, the show hasn't aired and I get actually a message from the owner of the coffee shop who I know. And they're like, um, hey, do you still have that video footage that you posted? Bravo contacted me asking for it. And so I just about died. Um, I Holy. got in touch with the producers of Real Housewives of Orange County. And they asked if they could use my uh, clip on the show. 
Oh I did not know what context it was in. I did not know really like how they would use it. Um, I asked if they could give me uh, like credit for the video or put my like Instagram handle on the screen and they kind of declined. And looking back, oh. I'm glad that they didn't because what ensued was basically one of the major storylines of the season. Um, they showed my clip on the, on the show where um, Tamara is basically saying that Kelly threw her mother down the stairs and she still to this day says that it was taken out of context, but I don't believe that. Yeah. I mean, what, I can't imagine a different way, to, like what context was it in then? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then you hear her saying later on that Kelly Dodd is the common problem in the same mm -hmm. conversation. So obviously they were talking about Kelly. She was probably digging up dirt and like, you know, stirring the pot as she does. Um, so I don't know. I stand by it. <laughs> so, and what season was this again? This was season 11, season 11 or 12. So this is like, um, shoot, what? 2017 ish. I think it was actually maybe 2018, 2018, maybe even 2019. So, okay. um, I can look back, but it so was before um, Bravo con before Bravo con before Bravo breaking news. This was just, this just happened. It was oh my just, gosh. I love that you went to Bravo con too. So can you tell us about that experience? Because I know some people who have gone, I did not go. And I, Regret it to this day that I did not even try. I mean, ugh, I'm such an idiot, so but <laughs> even I went by myself. I did not go with a friend. I bought a ticket. I said, I'm going. I had a couple friends that said, oh yeah, maybe I'll go. Um, but it didn't end up working out with them. So I went by myself and it was you're my hero, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> and I love but that. you're, you're with a group of the most like-minded people, how are you not going to make friends? I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just the most amazing experience. I encourage everybody listening and you, if you get the chance to yeah. go to BravoCon, go to BravoCon. It is everything you think it would be. Oh you get there first morning, <laughs> first morning, I'm there. You wait in a line outside, you get in, I'm sitting fourth row. Andy walks out on stage and the crowd goes wild. Yeah, I it's just panels, um, you know, OG housewives. I met the cast of Southern Charm. Um, you have housewives doing interviews 10 feet from you. It's just everything. So oh my God, I love um, it. Let's, let's manifest BravoCon 2022 yes, yes. and we will all be there. Yeah, I mean, I this past year, 2021, I literally, I was having like nightmares that I wasn't getting tickets. This is before they canceled it, obviously. And I was in such COVID denial at that period of time. In For some reason, it just never even dawned on me that anything would ever get canceled anymore. But obviously it did. And I was just completely devastated. I was so devastated. I think I like bought myself a cameo. I don't remember from who. It was like a cheap one. And then also- um. Dorinda just um, launched her book and she put her house up, Bluestone Manor on Airbnb. And when I saw that, I was like, in my mind, because again, I'm delusional and <laughs> I'm in denial all the time. But um, I, for some reason was like, I'm going to get this. I'm totally going to be the first one. I even recorded myself because I was like, I'm going to be able to post this. <laughs> that was gone like that. There was only two days or something. I was so devastated again, but then Dorinda came to, um, Saratoga, which is near me. And so I was like, I have to go, I have to go see Dorinda. So I did. And I got that signed copy. Amazing. Nice. And so, I just the thing about going and go. it's like, it feeds, it, it feeds something in you. I feel like the fangirl inside. It really does. And the thing about Bravo is Bravo just keeps on giving. Just when you yeah. think you miss out on something, there's something bigger, something better, something new to experience. Yeah. And they just give it all to us. That's why we love them. I know. I love it. Well, hopefully we'll 
will be there at BravoCon this year. Oh my gosh. We will. We will. Fingers crossed. Yes, we are. We are. So your video that you posted it went viral. Bravo contacted you as part of a storyline. They showed the footage on the show and it was featured on People Magazine too. Yes. Yes. Oh it God. was honestly a dream come true. I I just the fact that I was even emailing with the producers of the show was just like like I I died. It was just amazing. So what are you thinking about um this most recent season? Because we had the finale this week with the OC Reels. I have thoughts on that, but I'll let you go first. And then we also got the reunion trailer this week. What are your thoughts on current Orange County? That's a great question. Um, you know, I was the biggest Heather Dubrow fan. Back in the day, I was a fancy pants stan. She could do no wrong. She was aspirational. She really brought a lot to the show. And so when she announced her return, I was over the moon. I have to say I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in the season. You know, obviously it doesn't compare to last season, which was right. one of the worst seasons in Housewives history, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this season, I, I, I expected more from Heather. I don't know. I, I just feel like the cast, you know, just like they're doing a shakeup with New York, I feel like we might need a shakeup on, on Orange County. What do you think? I really want Richard Marks and Daisy Fuentes to be on Orange County. I want oh, Daisy tell me Fuentes who that is. Housewife. Well, they're the ones. So this Heather Debro, she kept mentioning them. The guy who wrote that song, who was playing the guitar, um, Waiting for You or whatever. Um, yes, and okay. he wrote the OC Real song too. Daisy Fuentes is his wife. She used to be an MTV VJ, like the first, one of the first ever. And she was like a model. She'd be like on magazine, like Teen Bop and like all that stuff when I was growing up. So I think it would be amazing to have them because they're a power couple and they would bring something totally new. And it's at that fancy pants level, which we need. Let's be honest. Like, I don't hate Gina, but I just don't love her. The casita and isn't doing it for me. Exactly. I just... And the and then her in the finale, I was kind of it was too much. The Tommy knockers, the bear talking to the bear. I'm like enough. <laughs> it's a little try hard. I, I mean, to be honest, Gina and Emily grew on me in a way this season that I never thought was possible. I always questioned why are they on the show? What are they bringing? But they did bring kind of like a lightness to the season mm -hmm. until the end. I kind of lost Gina there at the end a little bit. I thought her feud with Shannon was a little like pointless and over nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the finale, Aspen like kind of just, just ruined it for me. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them, but they, I have to say they did grow on me this season. Emily had some of her best moments of the entire show this season. I mean, the sandwich and the sauna, like that will forever be iconic. Yes, I think Emily, I really enjoyed Emily this season. I don't know. I didn't really love her or hate her before. And I, the same as you, I was like, why are they here? But I did enjoy her this season. And I think maybe because she's in a good place and maybe we saw kind of like growth with her. And I think that's why maybe I like her because you want to see that, right? Like her husband, I started crying at the end in the finale when she's wearing the white dress. And I, I also love that they didn't renew their vows. They just got pictures because I'm all about like, I told my husband, I don't care about a wedding. I just want really nice pictures. <laughs> and totally. I want obviously us to be there together. I didn't care about who else was there. So I love that they did that with their children and she looked beautiful and he surprised her and she genuinely seemed surprised and it was very touching and I, I cried and he got too never right. <laughs> I know like never did I think I would be rooting yeah. for Emily and Shane but I know. they have me rooting for them so yeah. I, I was tearing up too that was such an, a special moment yeah. I want to know your thoughts on Jen and Ryan okay so I think Dr. Jen Armstrong is a robot like she doesn't have 
any anything like the way that she copies Heather Debro and the way she talks to her children and just like her relationship with her husband, like turn to the left, like move your chair. Everything just seems very robotic. Like there's no feelings inside. And it's very strange to watch because I'm like, is this a, like a psychopath or, <laughs> or is like, she- it's like, is her family like hired actors? Like, yes. You know, yes, like it's exactly. like, it all seems very fake and kind of forced. 100%. Um, yeah. And yeah, I actually, I feel and- bad for Ryan. <laughs> And I feel weird saying oh, his really? name, but it's Ryan, damn it. Say his name. You I like, will never be able to like look at him the same. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And will anyone name Ryan? I'm like, your name is Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. 100 percent I mean, I just I, I can't get on board with Jen. I agree with you. I mean that um I just don't think she's really bringing anything, you know, her relationship issues with Ryan, I do feel sorry for it, but like, really, like, that's not, that can't be your whole storyline, yeah. is that your relationship's falling apart, and yeah. then the dinner party at Heather Dubrow's house, I mean, it was just, oh my gosh, that was a whole, a whole, and actually, that was that made most- me feel good, because it made me feel good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Like, like if I can keep it together after a few glasses of wine, like that's, uh, I'm good with I that. I mean, I've definitely been embarrassingly drunk like that before in my, like in my younger days, mostly. Oh yeah. We all have. <laughs> it might happen again someday. So I'm warning everyone now, but I mean, it's just, I, it did make me feel a little bit better. And I was like, this is great TV. And Ryan could could it just seems like he could not care less about Jen I mean at the finale party they always pan to him and he's like like preoccupied with something else he's looking at his phone he's not even like paying attention like he could care less I know I kind of feel bad for him because of that like he doesn't seem like he wants to be there right like he did not sign up for this and he did not want this and it's just kind of bringing these things to light that I'm sure he didn't want to be brought but um, so let's talk about the song. I can't <laughs> wait to hear your thoughts. Well, that's all I thought about yesterday. I posted <sighs> that song three times in three different ways yesterday on just Instagram plus all my other social media. <laughs> so it's been living in my head rent free. Um, I hate it and love it at the same time for different reasons. Uh- what yes. are your thoughts? Uh, I agree. The song itself isn't bad. The performance was like, I wanted to like crawl into a hole and like never come out. Like it was like secondhand embarrassment on a whole nother level. But also, you know, I don't know, maybe they thought this season was a flop. So you really got to like bring it for the finale party. But also how many people were at that finale party? Like 12? Like so it was the Real Housewives of Orange County and Singing. then not even Shannon's full four core friends. There were only <laughs> two. So we had about 12 people at the finale party and it was in her backyard. I yeah. don't know. I just expect more from the OC Housewives. Yeah. I wonder, well, I mean, Heather kind of contributed to that with the song. Whose idea was that anyways? Was it Shannon? Shannon started it and then Heather executed, right? I think that's kind of right. what happened. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I still think, you know what? The song is okay if, excuse me, if it brings Richard Marks and Daisy Fuentes on for next season, then it'll make the complete good- sense. It'll be perfect. It'll like, I could just see great things opening up for OC if they bring them on. So I'm it's just... a good introduction for them for sure. Okay. And I also just want to shout out, um, let's never forget Locke, Ladies of Rock, Shannon's daughters fans. Yes. Um, I was they... surprised that they weren't there. They really should have been there. I know. They did it first. Um, Dreamcatcher is a bop. And I just kind of <laughs> feel like Shannon like upstaged her daughters. Like, what's up with that? Come on. Like, let your daughters have the rock and roll spotlight. 
and or, you know, or you they could have opened. The they could have opened for know, them, right? like a reunion. Oh my god! I think god. we need a. I, I, we're saying it here. We need a Ladies of Rock lock reunion. Yeah. Speaking of reunions, what did you think of the trailer? Oh, it's um, it was a little disappointing to be honest. I don't know. I'm expecting more. I'm expecting more from the ladies, and yeah. also the fact that we only have two parts. I mean, I. I, I I just, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I mean, I don't even need a reunion. I'm kind of over this season. <laughs> so one exactly. part- Exactly, let's pull be, a New York. Yeah, one would be okay. I, I do feel like we need at least a one part reunion for every show. Even like, I mean, Family Karma never got a reunion and like Summer House, I don't think in the early days got reunions. And those are missed opportunities. We, there's pieces of the, the story that we don't know that, happen, you know, that happened between um, seasons. So I really love a reunion, but definitely could it be just one part. The only thing I remember from the trailer is Shannon not having shoes. I don't remember. Right. It no. was like all focused on her outfit fiasco, which I'm a little bit, um, you know, interested to see with um, her project runway designer and all of that. Owens, stuff, I love but- him, by the way. Yes. No, me too. I think he's like, he should be a housewife. Um, just saying, but, um, I don't, the Heather and Noelle, Noella stuff. I'm a little tired of it. I don't know. Um, I guess I'm interested to see how it plays out. Heather did tease that some, some stuff does go down, um, on watch what happens live. Um, Mm -hmm. so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll bring a little bit more, but I, I, I don't know. Overall, I think that the season was, a little disappointing and bravo if you hear this we need a revamp <laughs> yeah i think so too well that's what they try to do this season already with heather debro i don't know i, I know and it's time i feel like because it was she walked into a pile of shit pretty much i mean you can only do so much <laughs> with exactly a big pile right. of crap <laughs> they did take a step in the right direction. No Kelly. They got rid of Elizabeth and Bronwyn. I'm sorry. I could not, I could not deal with Bronwyn for one more season. No. So those three gone was a great move. Bringing Heather back was a great move. I think we need to take maybe one more step. And like you said, bring in some fresh blood, some more aspirational. Orange County is full of, it's rich here. I mean, yeah. there are people with more money than anywhere in the world yachts boats i mean i want to see all the nines we want to see that we're not getting that with the current cast we're getting it with heather but that's really it so i think we need we need some more fresh blood with some money honey yeah we need heather dubro level yes i I, agree i totally agree on that one um what else happened in OC? I think we're good with OC. Anything else on OC? I do love um, how Shannon was like, how dare you? I just love when she said, it just like warms my heart. <laughs> I, I have a love-hate relationship with Shannon. She, like some days she annoys me and then some days I'm like, this is, she's the glue that holds it all together. I mean, without does, Shannon, I know. Yeah. we wouldn't really have had a lot of the storylines. Um, what are your thoughts on Noella, love or hate? Um, I think she's good for the show. Actually, I don't know if she's good for the show. I think she's interesting. Not like my favorite kind of interesting, like just interesting in a way because she's wild. Um, and she's good because like she's the opposite of Heather. So they have that conflict. And But I could do without her. You know, I actually, one thing I disagree on is them getting rid of Elizabeth Vargas. I thought oh. she was chaotic and messy in a great way for Housewives because remember when she called Eddie Vetter or what is what's his name? And he, it was like the wrong number. Like that kind of stuff is what I want to see. It, she was just like very quirky too. And then she, you know, like just dropped a bomb about being raised in a cult. That was pretty intense. And then also- Just recently off camera, she was like held hostage in her home or something. Yeah. Like she could have took the, she could have stayed on for a second season. We could have got rid of Jen Armstrong. She didn't need to be there. And to be honest, they're like, 
they almost look similar too. It's like, why did we just switch one out? Swap one for the other. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. You make some good points about Elizabeth. You know, like I didn't see that yeah. at first, but no, I agree. Um, I don't know how I feel about Noella. I was like really into her at first, but as the season went on, I started to to question why. Um, but I don't know. I do want to give her the benefit of the doubt. The things that she went through this season, yeah. like un, unforeseen, yeah. I don't know. I like to, I give people the benefit of the doubt. and We don't really know her um, yeah. outside of this terrible situation that she's yeah. been through with the divorce and then her father mm-hmm. passing. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. I can't imagine what I would be acting like if cameras were following me around and I was going yeah. through that. So I just try to give her the benefit of the doubt. So we'll see yeah. if she's back next season. I'm not, I'm not sure if she'll be coming back. Yeah. I think you make a good point. It's like, I kind of feel like she should come back for a second season. So we can just confirm who she really is before we say we like her or not, you know, like we don't really know, like you said, and it's hard to gauge because yeah. Um, things that is she-, she really this crazy, like all the time <laughs> or was she affected by her, her life events, yeah. which I don't know. I think I'm maybe the only one giving her the benefit of the doubt, but I, I like to do that. I kind of am too a little bit. Like I think some things are just obnoxious that are very Bronwyn ish and she is friends. Well, she was friends with Bronwyn. Isn't that how she got on the show or something? That's right. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I kind of expected her to be that way. And also she said on Watch What Happens Live in the beginning of the season that she admitted she's a diehard fan and her husband was releasing allegations saying that the only thing she ever wanted to do since he met her was become a real housewife, which is strange to me. Yeah, it's giving um, like Jackie on New Jersey, like going to Teresa's book signing six years ago. Like it's a little questionable, like what your motives are and like what you're really doing this for. Yeah. But one thing about Noella that I really love and appreciate from her is she serves all her looks. She nails it every time. She's gorgeous. She just looks stunning all the time. 100% 100% her confessionals always spot on yeah she always shows up I actually loved her um finale look the uh like Noella Hendricks look I I thought it was cute so it was cute yeah I, I'm with you there I'm with you there yeah. yeah oh wow so I don't know we'll see how the reunion goes and then hopefully I don't know we need something we need like, to zhuzh it up well, we need yes. Bravo to hear our our manifestations. <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm not sure how, but Bravo, like we, we need a switch up. We need a switch up, but, um, I have faith in you. Yes. So summer house is one of your favorites. Is that your favorite Bravo show right now? Currently on. Yes. Yeah. And I am surprised that I'm even saying that because I didn't even start watching summer house until, um, in quarantine with COVID. Um, Same. So I think really, yeah. I'm, I started on season three. I didn't even watch season one and two. So <laughs> I mean, the cast has changed so much since then, anyway. But yeah. um, I just became completely obsessed. I think that they're bringing stuff to the table that the current Housewives franchises mm-hmm. are not. Yeah. Um, and I'm just. I'm obsessed with the whole, the whole cast of Summer House. I mean, Craig and Paige could not be a more perfect couple. I have a, an unhealthy obsession with Craig and Paige. So, I need um, to hear about this more because I'm like probably the only person who is not on that same page. <laughs> no pun intended. I'm not on the same page. I, I just, so are you a Southern Charm watcher? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> I've loved Craig from the beginning. I think he's I love so Craig cute. Too, yeah. yeah. You know, we're rooting for him, you know, through his trials and tribulations with Naomi. Um, and then Paige has just been my summer house favorite. And just, you know, the fact it's like when your two favorite celebrities yeah. somehow meet and get together, it's like my two favorite Bravo celebrities like found each other. And yeah. I just, I, I love them. Why don't, why aren't you here for them? So, okay. 
I started off love, love, loving both Craig and Paige separately, individually on their own as they came into my life. <laughs> but then um, when Madison joined, she's like very pivotal in a lot of things. Madison is a core character that needs to be in our lives forever. But when she came on the scene, she triggered Craig so hard that like it was comical. I felt like Shep almost just like you're insane right now just watching him and he was so wild at the reunion his hair was crazy he's like screaming and yelling and I'm like why does Craig care so much and it I started thinking about it because I'm like it was funny to watch but then when I started breaking it down and thinking about it more I was like this actually is not making me feel good about Craig because remember first season how he attacked Catherine because she slept with a like three guys at the table and he was not one of them, but he wanted to sleep with her. So I don't like that. He ha- kind of has this history of trying to like tear women down in my opinion, just from what I've seen. Like, and I, I feel like Madison had every reason I'm like, I'm team Madison because I feel like she acted out not the right way. I'm not going to excuse her behavior, but she acted out because of what Austin did to her. He cheated on her first. And like, I can empathize with that feeling of how hurt she must be. Cause then you start to see like, she was cheating on him when they would get back together to get revenge. It was like very toxic. And like, granted, I don't agree with how she went about everything. I just could kind of relate and be like, yeah, Austin does suck. (laughs) And so for Craig to like, be screaming and yelling. It just like made me think of him yelling at Catherine who he wound up becoming friends with. So like, it was just, it was all for nothing, you know, in the end. And it was like, he just took advantage. I, in my opinion of being able to target these women and like almost shaming them for who they're sleeping with when, you know, it's a double standard. And I know that goes along with the the theme of Southern charm because, you know, of the traditional ways of the South. So I get it, but I don't know. And then like with Paige, I feel like she has this like unhealthy, like disdain for Lindsay that I don't know where it comes from. And it's just like, and I'm a Lindsay Hubbard ride or die fan. Like I'm a hub hag. So I'm like, I don't understand why Paige always gets so upset at her. And then I think that the whole Sierra thing, I read someone's theory. I don't remember who it was. So forgive me for not giving a shout out. If I remember, I'll put in the show notes, but somebody um, gave their take on Paige and Craig and how they pumped up Sierra to be like, go after Lindsay because Lindsay outed Craig and Kristen Cavallari to Paige. And so, and you could, the smile on their face when Sierra was going, you know, just going off, that to me made me feel really icky, you know? So like right now that's where I am, but I want to love them because I originally loved Craig. I originally loved Paige and I hope that I get back there someday. Sorry, don't be mad. Yeah, yeah, no. So, um, So first of all, Craig was wasted at that reunion. It, yes. Andy <laughs> talked about how Craig showed up wasted yeah. at the beginning yeah, of the day at that reunion. So, and I am also a Madison stan. I think she's the most gorgeous human to walk this yes. earth. Yes. And um, I think that she was in, not in the wrong, you know, going after Austin and Craig. Craig was in the wrong. That being said, I try to separate who these cast members are as people mm-hmm. from why I like them on the show. Let's, yes, let's yeah. be real. Terrible people make great reality television. Yeah. No, and I agree with that. Yeah. Craig might be a kind of a terrible person in these situations, which you've mentioned plenty. He makes great TV. Yes. And that's why I love, I love watching him. And, you know, sometimes I feel like they are playing it up for the cameras. They're they're playing up the drama a little bit. And yes, he's had some questionable moments, but I feel like he always brings it. I'm actually like on chapter three of his new book. Shout out to oh, Pillow Talk. Um, how is it? So I heard it's, it's good. good so far. 
you learn a lot about, you know, the makings of Southern Charm and how he got to be on the show and the behind the scenes. So I don't know. I do feel like people maybe like you who see him like in this bad light might see a different mm. side of him in the book. So yeah. you kind of get his side of things. So, um, and then, so back to Summer House, yeah. I agree that Paige and Paige was totally pumping up Sierra to go after yeah. Lindsay. I also love Lindsay. Yeah. It's like, I can never, I have a really difficult time picking sides because yeah. I see all of the sides on Summer House. Yeah. I love Paige and Sierra's friendship. Mm. I love that uh, Paige is standing up for Sierra and mm. helping her. But I also see Lindsay's side and her like kind of don't give a fuck attitude. Yeah. So um, I, I, I see both sides and I just feel like, I don't know, Paige and Lindsay have never really gotten along from the start. And yeah. this is kind of just a culmination of several seasons of kind of, you know, back and forth. I think it all stemmed from like the Hannah burner of it all. They were, yeah. they were never really on the same side of things then. So True. I don't know. I just love the conflict. I love <laughs> the, um, I just love the whole cast and I I'm rooting for, for Craig and Paige. So I do love Andrea and I listened to your episode with Andrea <laughs> I cannot believe you got to meet him. Like I said, Madison's the most beautiful, like female on this earth. Yeah. He is the most beautiful man alive. And he's so sweet. Like, oh my God, I want to cry when I see Andrea cry on TV. It makes me so me upset. Too. I'm like, you're an angel. After that diarrhea story, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was like a little turned off by him. <laughs> I'm like, Andrea, no, don't ruin it for me. And so, and that was like, the week that I was about to interview him. And so it was actually a good thing because I was like, whatever, Andrea, but then he won me over and I was like, I love you. He's That's a sweetheart. Yeah. You know, like they don't, they don't get casting right. <clears throat> Alex all the time, but um, <laughs> they got it right with an Andrea for sure. Yeah. What about um, Jason Cameron on winter house? Did you watch winter house? Of course I watched yeah. Winter House. I love Jason. I thought he would have been a good addition to Summer House, especially with the Lindsay right? of it all. Um, yes. Oh my gosh. I, 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 I got a chance to interview him as well in my first season. He is also so sweet and so good looking. I love the eye candy of Summer House and Winter House. That's the part oh, that we, sure. don't, we don't really get from Housewives is we don't get that role, like you know, triangle, love triangles and the, you know, the sparks, the flirtatious stuff. And then the eye candy of these models. Like, I just love it. <laughs> You're exactly right. No, I think that, um, summer house has like surpassed Vanderpump rules in every yeah. way possible. Yeah. It is definitely the new Vanderpump. And, um, I'm just, I'm just obsessed. Did you hear the, um, the winter house tea for next season? Well, I know they already filmed, wait, what's the tea? <laughs> well, um, some uh, familiar faces make an appearance by the names of Tom and Tom. Oh, they do? Um, Did I know that? They do. We get a, a crossover um, experience. Tom and Tom visit the winter house, which I'm really excited. Well, um, I heard originally they wanted Tom and Tom, but Tom and Tom couldn't go. So they got Craig and Austin. So oh, really oh, for season one. Yeah. For the first season. So that would be great to have Tom and Tom there. So this is before Tom's divorce, right? Or pending. divorce. So, um, uh, according to Dumois shout out, um, they posted that this is kind of as things were kind of untangling with Tom and Katie. So he actually talks about it a little bit on winter house. So Ooh. I'm really looking forward. I mean, we've got Southern Charm, we've got Summer yeah. House, and we've got Vanderpump Rules all in one house. I mean, I, I have chills. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I do love that. And I heard that Leva from Southern Charm is having a spinoff as well, which I'm really interested in. I was disappointed that they didn't show more of her business in her was was she in two seasons or one season? I don't even remember now. This was I her think second just season, one right? so far. One? Mm -hmm. Well, I really wanted to see more of her business because I thought that there would be potential for something like that. And I guess they're moving forward with it anyway. So that's really great. I hope. Um, oh, and then Danielle and Robert are talking about moving to Charleston. What? The 
Can you imagine? I, yeah, I cannot. I cannot even imagine. Like, I, there's also rumors going around too that, um, so uh, Craig and Austin did some live pillows and beer shows recently. And they mentioned, he mentioned something that kind of alluded to the fact that Paige was moving to Charleston for the summer and that it could potentially be filmed. You, you know, this is not confirmed. This is just a rumor. I thought they, and I thought they were already filming and she was already... That's for Southern Charm. So this could be something different. I don't know. And I'm like manifesting Danielle um, and her man coming to Charleston and like them having like a little summer spinoff. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Or like a love spinoff, like a Ryan Serhant and his wife. I forgot her name. Remember they had like their little spinoff. They got engaged and married and you know, they have those yeah. on Housewives too. Yeah, and like, a, or a Jackson, Brittany, take Kentucky, you know, yes. like a type of, yeah, just like a six episode, like, you know, six oh episode little gosh. spinoff about their relationship and kind of I a summer. Watch. Yeah, yes. me too. I, I, I think that they're doing an amazing job with the spinoff. I, yeah. I'm so here for Leva's spinoff too. I think yeah. it's like, it's going to bring some Vanderpump Rules vibes and Candy and the Game yeah. vibes, which I'm all here for. Oh, I love Candy and the Gang. I have, I just interviewed Dominique last week and then I inter- interviewed Brian Redman too already. And he's just, they're both amazing. I am predicting them to be really huge successes. I, I see big things for them. Bigger than Van. Oh my God. Um, you know, like, and I said that to Dominique and she goes, oh my God, they live in mansions. That would be amazing. Like she was just so grateful for just even where she is right now. And she showed me her affirmations. She wrote on a post-it like three years ago that said, be on a TV show. And now she's on a TV show. That is awesome. I I love that for her. I need to catch up on Candy and the Gang. I've seen the first two episodes and I loved every second, but you know, I'm overwhelmed with the Bravo content. So I have to, I have to make time to catch up though. (laughs) Yeah, there is a lot. So I don't blame you, but I want to thank you so much for being here and joining me to talk about OC and Summer House, my favorite things to talk about. So, oh, same. Yeah, I, I appreciate you coming or, here. Do and- you want to tell everyone where they can find you? Yes. Um, so give me a follow at Bravo Breaking News on Instagram, Bravo Breaking on Twitter, Bravo Breaking News on TikTok. Um, I am on all the platforms and always filling the Bravo T recaps, um, all that fun stuff. Thank you so much for having me, Jenny. Yeah. Thank you so much.